It opens with a Hangman Page promo segment. He is limping. He has a crutch. He looks forlorn. His on-screen Chiron reads, Not looking good. He limps out. He is distraught. Starts talking about his AEW run like it's in the past tense. How he won the world title before. That makes it so frustrating to have that opportunity again. And now this happens to him. He announces, This Sunday at Revolution, I will not be able to compete. There are huge boos. Until Swerve comes out, then everyone cheers him. Swerve says, listen, I tried to kill you, you tried to kill me, but I targeted you because you were the best. I have always respected you. Sucks what happened to you. I respected you so much, I broke into your house and cut a promo on your child in his crib. I respected you as a threat. I wanted to make sure you didn't fight me anymore. Uh, Wrestling is weird. But uh, anyway, uh, your your fate sucks, but my fate remains to be the world champion this Sunday at the pay-per-view. Joe comes out. He is confused, and by this point, I was also confused about what exactly the match was because uh, Hangman had announced he was taking, you know, he would not be competing. He said, flat out said, I will not be competing this Sunday. But Joe says, whether well, it's one of you or both of you, it both your asses. He goes to leave. Swerve interrupts him. He is still the same man who did all these horrible things, including, as you noted, invading somebody's home and threatening their child. After I beat you, Joe, you'll be back on commentary ring. I poncho again. And as he's doing his catchphrase, Hangman jumps him with a crutch, lays him out, screams at Joe, and means to shout, you won't be champion, he won't be champion, I will be champion. And I wrote down, so apparently it's still a three-way. And Excalibur screamed, so apparently it's still a three-way. Well, the announcers did try to make it very abundantly clear that it is a three-way. The match is still on. It is still a three-way. We talked about this last week. Hangman faked an injury because he had a family issue and there was concern that he would not be able to do the pay-per-view legitimately. That's why he did the injury. And a couple of days before Dynamite, everything apparently got resolved. And so he can do the pay-per-view. And so they, they did this angle. And it's funny because in storyline, it's ridiculous. Like, this yeah. all makes sense in real life. Like, in real life, what happened was he wasn't sure he could make it, and so he did an angle to have an out in case he couldn't, but he could, and so then they did an angle to get him back in. But, like, in storyline, if you don't know any of that, Hangman, for reasons unknown, mm-hmm. faked an injury yes. so that he could come to the ring on a crutch and hit Swerve with it. Like You know, I've seen a that lot was of his plan. episodes of AEW television where one wrestler attacks another with some sort of weapon. And uh, none of them needed to fake an injury and claim to back out of a title match before. Yeah, you don't need much of a... So, I mean, you know, real shit happened. And I was told that whatever the situation was, I mean, there was a belief that it could be very serious. So it was not just, you know... But everything ended up okay, and he's back. And the only other thing I want to mention is how weird... How weird this main event storyline is. Because... Hangman absolutely turned heel, but he was a total babyface in the match last week. He was on the babyface team. He worked as a babyface. The crowd cheered him as a babyface, and he was a babyface throughout this promo, and they cheered him as a babyface until he finally attacked Swerve. Swerve is a heel who everybody loves, but he is a heel. And I know people will say he's actually babyface. Listen, I can't tell you how many Defy shows I went to. Vinny went to Defy shows. I have seen Swerve as a babyface. This is not the Swerve babyface character. This is the Swerve heel character. Yes, the fans love him. I presume he is turning babyface at some point. But he is still a heel who is getting cheered. And then there's Samoa Joe, who also is a heel. But... Like, he may be the biggest babyface of them all. Like, they really love Swerve, but the last two weeks, Joe has done the promo and vowed to beat both their asses, and he's got the biggest pop of anybody. So it is a very, very weird dynamic, but I think the match is going to be quite great on Sunday. And I do think Samoa Joe is retaining the title. Uh, Yeah, this whole thing was very strange and wacky, but everyone played their roles well. And Swerve, as always, comes off like a next-level megastar. 
So uh, I'm not as confident in, as you in Joe's winning. I, uh, I think if I had to bet, I'd probably pick Joe. But I, I don't think uh, I don't think the door's closed here on old Swerve. I think Heyman winning would be a Swerve, actually. But uh, anyway, earlier today, Matthew and Nicholas Jackson arrived to clock in for work. Renee is there to interview him wearing what appeared to be a tie-dye camouflage shirt and rhinestone chaps of some kind. She asks about their meeting with Ric Flair. They say it went great, but have you seen Sting today? It's his final dynamite. We're dying to see him and thank him and conduct his exit interview. And at this point, they weld their large white baseball bats to indicate their exit interview is, in fact, a pummeling. <laughs> the show long storyline. It's like, you know, everyone talks. I shouldn't say it. They don't do anymore. But in the old days, it was, you know, the young bucks are just spots and no psychology, whatever. But you watch them wrestle as a tag team, and they're like a great professional wrestling tag team. Yes. And they do all sorts of old-school tag team, traditional pro wrestling, and they sprinkle some excitement into it. This was the most old-school pro wrestling storyline throughout this show. The two bad guys are going to look for the good guy. They're going to make sure he gets a beaten. They look through him. They look for him throughout the entire show. And at the end, he finds them and beats their asses. I mean, you couldn't have a more old-school, traditional pro wrestling storyline than what we had with the Young Bucks here on this show. A recap from Collision, where Brian Danielson beat Junakiyama in a match, then kicked him the balls, and a big brawl broke out with Eddie Kingston and FTR, which sets up Blackpool Combat Club versus FTR and Eddie Kingston. So there's no stakes here. There's no titles in the line. There's no hair or mass in the line. It's just six dudes who want to fight, who love fighting. They all should have to fight each other. Isn't that really why we're all here? So it's very to fight much... each other. Yeah. Well, well, not if you watch NXT. We're here to watch them fight each other. They're there to yeah. fight each other. Yeah. God damn! It's a good thing that Ariana Grace wasn't here in the audience. That is the next to the point. You know, we'll get to her. Uh, we will get to the three dumbest storylines in all of wrestling. All on the same show. You know, I feel like NXT was the much more interesting show. Should we just skip ahead to that? <laughs> God, no. All right. We'll get to it. So these guys had a match. I don't know how long this thing went, but when it ended, the show was 45 I'll tell you exactly old. how long it went because I got yeah. mad about it. Yeah. 23 minutes and no time calls. Okay, yes. Fuck off with that. I mean that with all due respect. Yeah. You either got to do the time calls or don't do the time calls. And Dave's trying to explain, well, the, officially, they only call the last five minutes. I was like, what? Who the fuck ever told us that? You have some inside information you're just now telling us? Like, if that's what you're going to do, tell the audience. If it's a 30-minute time limit, we'll start calling it 25. If it's a 20-minute time limit, we'll start calling it 15. As it is, as a viewer, I just watch all these goddamn matches and, you know, once every four matches, they'll call time for reasons unknown. And the rest of the time, they don't. And I'm like, what the fuck's going on here? Well, that is certainly issue one. Issue two is uh, 23 minutes, you said this went? Yeah. So two two commercial breaks. Uh, there's a long heat segment on Dax. Then there's a long heat segment on Cash. Then Eddie gets a hot tag, which is missed, by the way. That's a major production error. But he's briefly running wild. And then they cut him off with triple teams. I thought, okay, the Blackpool Combat Club has been so dominant here that clearly FTR and Eddie Kingston are going to win this match. Yeah. And why not? Because, again, there's nothing on, at stake here. They may as well just win. And uh, the thing just keeps going and going. Now the Blackpool Combat, Blackpool Combat Club guys, who have been winning the entire match, have triple submissions on. They have grounded things to a halt. The and the crowd is, died. Thank you. Yes. Think about, I, I'm going to read off the names in this match. John Moxley, Claudio Castagnoli, Brian Danielson, Dax Harwood, Eddie Kingston, Cash, uh, Cash Wheeler. These men are all great. Great. But this thing just kept going and going, and there was all the heels kicking their asses, and the crowd died with the triple submission. It goes longer and longer and longer, and finally, Danielson suplexes Eddie onto his head, hits the knee strike, still won't pin him, stomps him out for a while, Locks on a triangle, flexes his muscles, and has declared the winner. What in the hell was this match? <laughs> well, I liked it more than you did. In a vacuum, I totally understand. You have the challenger to Eddie Kingston beat Eddie Kingston here to show he is a threat for the baby of Sunday. That's fine. But you maybe go through 23 minutes of the baby faces getting their asses completely handed to them to get there. 
Was this a bad wrestling match? No, at all. It was better than most, but it should have been better. It should have been a lot better. Well, that was actually a couple of matches here on the show, but I thought the match was very good. It did go too long. We did have a spot where the crowd completely died in like the final five minutes of the match, which with these six guys, I didn't even think that was possible, but I saw it with my own two eyes. And then, yes, Brian Danielson choked Eddie Kingston unconscious prior to their match on Sunday. And, you know, if you followed wrestling, everyone thought the same thing. Well, looks like Eddie's beaten Brian on Sunday. And he very, very well may. I think it's the wrong call. I love Eddie Kingston, but I think Brian Danielson needs to finally win a fucking title because his goal is to get guys over. But when all you do is get guys over, it's like they ain't getting that over just another person that beat you you have to build yourself up into something big and he should be the continental champion Mm -hmm. he should run through some dudes and then they find the right guy at the right time to not just beat him which everybody has done but to beat him for that continental crown and i know he's going to put the guy over and i'm going to be mad when it happens i'm hoping that i'm in a different timeline and he actually beats him on two straight shows but uh, I think he needs to he needs to win a big one. I think Brian Danielson needs to win a big one. He would argue that. I don't care. I think he needs to win a big one. Yeah, yeah. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you? WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute... As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never You'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.